Hello, 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 hello. Welcome, everyone, once again to our weekly Wednesday night webinar. I am Dr. Patrick McGrath, clinical psychologist, chief clinical officer for No CD. No CD, a downloadable app. You can get through Google Play or iOS. Check us out. And, um, you know, we got some things going on. We we got an amazing study that we released that showed how effective virtual treatment is for obsessive compulsive disorder. We've launched our partnership with Howie Mandel to talk about the fact that OCD is not a joke and to release some great OCD awareness out there into the world. And, uh, you know, there's just a lot of great stuff going on. So, Go to www.nocd.com if you're interested in working with one of our therapists uh, to do some teletherapy for your OCD or BFRBs like trichotillomania or excoriation or even some hoarding that, that we work on as well too. And uh, we would be happy to do a free 15-minute call with you to see if we might be able to assist and then get you set up with one of our therapists. So why don't we dive into our Wednesday night webinar and let's see what's going on. Your Majesty says, why does one say that OCD is egodystonic when the urge to do something like wash your hands or insert compulsion here is so strong? Uh, because I've literally been talking to people while washing their hands, then they're telling me, I don't want to be doing this. I hate this. Uh, I want to stop, but I feel like I can't. That's what we mean by egodystonic, that... Uh, I don't really want to do this, even though the compulsion is there and and I may feel like I want to do it. Once once I've done it, I recognize that this isn't really what I want to be doing and I hate this and I wish that it would go away. So that's what we really mean by, by ego dystonic. We would like the OCD to go away. We don't want it to stick around. We don't think it's helping us in many ways and we don't think it's adding anything to our life whatsoever. It's just a real pain in the, in the tuchus, shall we say. Uh, Soleil says how to deal with real event OCD when involves you making a taboo mistake as a 14 or 15 year old that you can't seem to let go. Doesn't involve mentally or physically hurting anybody. Uh, well, I'm just wondering, uh, how, how much we should punish our 14 or 50 year old selves. Uh, I, I did some dumb things at, at that age as well too. So I'm wondering, uh, now at, at, uh, <laughs> well, 30 years on to that. Plus, uh, how much should I be punishing myself over the fact that age 14 or 15, I did something that might have been offensive to someone or someone didn't like or, or something of that nature? Where where does it end? And in OCD, can you actually ever sufficiently punish yourself enough? I, I don't think so. I don't think I've ever met anyone who's had OCD who has said, oh, you know what? finally got enough punishment in. So now the OCD has said, I'm good and it's going to go away. That's never happened. That's not the way it happens. It doesn't work that way. OCD is not about finding enough punishment for anyone. OCD is about uh, really just continuing to grill it and grill it and grill it. And you'll never be able to do enough to satisfy what the OCD wants you to do. Claire says, I've been dealing and scared of the fact that I had an OCD episode where I wanted to get up and harm people, and I was freaking about it because I wasn't feeling distressed in the right way. So first of all, the right way. I don't, I don't know what distressed in the right way might actually mean, Claire, because uh, believe me, there's been times that I've uh, thought about harming people as well, too, and was just like, yeah, whatever. And, and I went on. So I'm wondering what you mean by the right way. Are, are we supposed to feel absolutely distressed when we have maybe an ego dystonic thought, a thought that we either don't want or that we just don't really care about in, in a situation like that? And you say, I wonder if it's okay and I was okay with it. And it means that I want to kill people. And I keep saying no in my head, but it doesn't feel like I want to say no. And I have the feeling that I want to. Also, I was scared because I felt relief in saying everyone wants to kill people or my thoughts are sometimes not scaring me. And I don't care about that. And I'm scared that's a bad thing. So you'll notice here, 
and, and this kind of goes back to you know things we were doing last week as well too i mean is there is there ever enough um distress that one can have to satisfy ocd is there an ever enough times that somebody can deny something is there ever enough times in ocd that someone can say that they don't want a certain thought or image or urge to pop in their head i i don't think so i just don't think that it actually exists i don't think that you can actually get to a point in ocd where you will satisfy the ocd to the level that it will say Oh Claire, now that thought was just fine. Don't don't you don't you fret or worry about that thought whatsoever. There's there's absolutely nothing to worry about, Claire. That just doesn't exist. So so I, I'm going to be perfectly honest, all of you. If somebody cuts me off in traffic, my first urge is to ram my car into theirs, and I don't feel guilty about it whatsoever. I also don't ram my car into other people, but but believe me, I've thought about it on, on numerous occasions, right? So. It's it's not about me having to be angry or mad at myself about a thought that I had. And it's not about me having to sufficiently right, uh, decide that, you know, I, I don't know that I don't like that thought enough. I need to not like that thought even more in order to truly be OK. Right. It, no, that that's not it. Right. It's about recognizing that random thoughts pop into all of our heads. Random images pop into all of our heads. Random urges pop into all of our heads. And the only thing that wants us to think a lot about them is obsessive compulsive disorder. Because people without OCD who have the exact same kinds of intrusive thoughts or images or urges that people with OCD do, for those people without OCD, when those things pop in their head, they're like, whatever, okay. And they move on, right? That's the big difference. So, Claire, your your question kind of really goes along the lines of what we would really typically see with OCD. You're trying to figure out the right way to think about it and the right level of distress. And, and then you're going to, does this mean then that I want to, and then go to the XXX extreme kind of experience, right? And then do I have to tell myself no, but, but maybe I don't feel like I'm doing it the right way or I don't want to say no. And what if I didn't want to say no to myself? Does that mean that I really do want to do this thing? And if I did want to do this thing, should I just lock myself up away from society? Because what if I am a person in society who has these thoughts and what one day I just snap and I go and do these types of things. And how can you guarantee to me, Dr. McGrath, that I'm never going to actually snap and do one of these types of things? And, and do I need to tell myself over and over again that that's never going to happen? And no, I don't like it. And do I have to do that to a certain threshold to make sure that it's not liked just quite enough? Because if I don't not like it enough, then it might mean that I actually do like it. And then am I just fooling myself that I might actually like something that I don't really like? But what if I do really like it and I don't like it? And does that mean that I'm going to do it? And now I have to kind of check constantly to make sure that that's the case, because if I don't, then I will become a bad person. I really don't want to become a bad person. And my OCD is telling me you don't want to be a bad person, and but you are a bad person. You know why you're a bad person? Because you have thoughts. And so what do we need to do when you have thoughts or images or urges? You got to neutralize them. And if you don't neutralize them in just the right way, then you're a bad person because then you want them. And then if you want them, well, who's to say now that you'll stop from doing them? Because doesn't anybody who want a thought or image or urge then want to go out and actually do it? I mean, isn't that the way that it works? The most and I think that I want to do something, I have to do it. So you know what that means, everyone? I'm going to leave this webinar probably at some point tonight because you know what I want to do? I want to take a Molotov cocktail. I want to throw it at my neighbor Dave's house. Then I want to go in the middle of the street. I want to poop in a bag and I want to light it on fire and I want to put it in my neighbor Josh's house. And then I'm going to ring the doorbell and I'm going to watch him come out. I'm going to watch him step on it. And I'm going to laugh at him because he's got a flaming poopy uh, shoe now or something like that. And then I'm going to shoot all the geese that are flying over my house. Then And then I'm going to come back and do this webinar. And you know what? What if I really wanted to do those? things. Maybe I do. Maybe I don't not want to do them enough and maybe they'll actually happen. Who knows? We'll see. Or I just have thoughts and images and urges. And just like everybody else, they pop into my head and I can let them go. And I need not give them any extra attention or anything else whatsoever. Now, that was like five minutes of that. For those of you who are loved ones of people with OCD, and it was exhausting to watch that for five minutes, imagine that going on for hours and hours a day. Because that would be what it's like to live in the head of somebody who has obsessive compulsive disorder. 
And you may say, well, I, I had no idea. All right. Well, now you do. And now you know why you can't tell someone with OCD, hey, stop thinking about it. Get it out of your head. That's not the way we do it. What do we do? We recognize, and Claire, what I want you to do is, I'm going to go out and live in the world, even though I have these thoughts or images or urges that pop into my head that are frightening and scary to me and that feel overwhelming and that I don't know if I've neutralized enough. And I'm going to allow myself to recognize that I can handle that. I can absolutely handle that. Delius13 says, how do you bounce back from an episode or increasing severity of thoughts? I sometimes feel like I can't maintain consistency with my ERP because of perfectionism. Thanks as always. Well, the moment, (laughs) the moment you try to do therapy perfectly, you're screwed, right? Because there's no such thing as perfect therapy. But OCD will tell you, oh, wait, you want to get rid of me? (laughs) Well, A, that's dumb. And B, If you want to get rid of me, you have to do it perfectly. And to do it perfectly means you have to do therapy perfectly. Because if you don't do therapy perfectly, then you're never going to get rid of me. And if you're never going to get rid of me, then I'm just going to be around all the time. And it's sounding like you don't appreciate the fact that I'm going to be around all the time. But let me tell you, you should appreciate that I'm around all the time. Because if it wasn't for me, bad things would have been happening all the time. You'll notice that all these compulsions that you've done, well, guess what? That's why the bad thing hasn't happened is because you've done these compulsions. Now, there's the OCD lie. Compulsions don't stop anything from happening. They trick you into believing that they stop things from happening, but they don't actually stop things from happening. And I want all of you to recognize that, right? Because otherwise, everybody in the world would be doing compulsions. And my job would be the reverse of what it is. My job would be to give people OCD. I say, wait a minute. You would like to make sure nothing bad happens in your life? Well, have I got the cure for you? Here's OCD. You should develop this and you should just have all these intrusive thoughts and images or urges. And then you'll do these compulsions to neutralize them. And then guess what? Nothing bad will ever happen to you ever again for the rest of your life. Wouldn't that be awesome? Now, we are not doing that. Let's just be perfectly frank. We are not out there to give OCD to anybody because even people with OCD say to other people, believe me, you don't want OCD, right? And that's why people get pissed off when they hear in the news or something like that. Oh, maybe we should all have a little OCD or, you know, I'm just a little OCD. No, you're not, right? No, you're not. So don't say that because it's not true. I want you to recognize that we're not expecting as therapists perfectionism in treatment because we know that that's just part of OCD trickery. So we're not going to expect you to be a perfect you know, patient by any means whatsoever. Angel says, your majesty, I think because ego alien or dystonic thoughts are ones that aren't in line with what, yeah, or who you are. So the compulsion hopes to momentarily alleviate that act as a false comfort. Yes. Uh, and then you ask, how do you approach pure O intrusive thoughts that are pedophilic in nature and at the same time be able to continue with, uh, Oh, the, the sexual thoughts that you like and not have them overlap. Do you use the ERP in both scenarios? I would, I would. I mean, here's the thing. I'm not out to get people to stop thinking something. Now that might sound weird, right? Don't you want someone to not think of something? Well, I don't want to think of this anymore. And, and of course, the, what happens when you try not to think of something is the pink elephant appears and then that's all you think about. So my goal isn't to tell you not to think of something. My goal is to get you to not care about thinking something enough that even if you did think of something, it'll just be like a passing leaf on a stream and it's no big deal. And then you'll pay very little attention to it. And the likelihood of it popping up again and again and again in the future becomes less and less and less over time because you're just not paying attention to it because you don't care if it pops into your head. Right. So, but you might say, yeah, but this thought's really bad. I shouldn't have this thought. This one's really, really bad. And oh boy. Does OCD love that? Oh, hey, 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 guess what? Uh, Guess what, Angel? We found the bad thought 
And it's okay to have any other one but this one. But the bad thought is the bad thought. And you can't have the bad thought because you know what they say about people have bad thoughts. Then they do bad things. And you better neutralize the bad thought or else you're going to like it. And if you like it, you might even be more likely to do bad things. And you don't want to be the kind of person who does bad things. So let's just go ahead and neutralize that bad thought to make sure that that doesn't happen. And oh, look at that. Ah, the compulsion has occurred. The neutralization has happened. And look, I have not done anything wrong. Wow. I see, I see little, little cartoon characters running through a, a field and bathing in a stream. And oh, wait, what? Do I like them bathing in the stream? Are they naked bathing? Oh, my gosh. Now I'm thinking about cartoon characters bathing in a stream and they're naked. What a horrible person I am. Oh, my gosh. Oh, my gosh. I got to I got to do something else now. I got to I got to neutralize that. Neutralize it. No, I don't want I don't want that. I don't want that. Thought. And that's what happens. You, you get no peace of mind with OCD, right? You just get torturous OCD with OCD. <laughs> That's all. Alex says, how can one overcome? Oh, here we go. Oh, sorry. I jumped a little bit there. Let me, let me go back up. Hold on a moment. There we are. Alex says, how can one overcome the constant obsessing about whether they have OCD or not? I know our practice would be, I may or may not have OCD. But there are several mental illnesses that share symptoms of OCD, pure OCD, like schizophrenia, that are serious causes for concern. How can we overcome the constant torture of uncertainty about what illness they actually have? Well, very simple. Uh, go get a diagnosis and work with a therapist who will help you with treatment. And let's see what the results of the treatment are. And you might say, well, how can I trust the diagnosis? Well, Come on over to no CD. We use a validated way of doing diagnoses with people. Let us help you with that. And then let us do some treatment. And maybe you'll learn to just live with the fact that what if it's something else? Now, I've worked with people who have spent 40 years wondering, but what if I have schizophrenia? Right? And that's what they've done. They've spent 40 years wondering if they have schizophrenia. Not having schizophrenia, but wondering if they have schizophrenia. Right. Very, very common kinds of things. So I'm not going to be able to convince you that you don't have something. I wish that I could, believe me. I wish I wish everyone would listen to me and, and be like, ah, yes, the McGrath has spoken. We now have the answer. But but I know that that that's not the way that it works. But I can get you to not care so much about the thought about it. And if that's what we can do, that's what we're going to do. That's the way that we're going to approach it. That's how we're going to take it. TJ says, is my cousin TJ? No, I probably not. But hi, how do I deal with my mind telling me I'm not good enough for my partner and he deserves better? I ended up engaging in a compulsion due to these thoughts. Uh, well, again, TJ, do we have to believe everything that pops into our head? Is it a requirement that if we think something that it is true? I want everyone to think about this for a moment here. Is it true that everything that pops into your head is true and real? Or maybe not. Maybe it is not the fact that every time something pops into your head that it is true or real. Maybe we could just have weird thoughts, right? Maybe we could have doubts. Maybe we have insecurities. Right? Okay, so we have them. So what? Right? Do they have to actually have huge meaning, though? Does my wondering if my partner and I are right for each other mean that I now have to beg my partner to stay with me and confess to them all the thoughts that I have and wonder if they deserve better or not? Or could that just be a, hmm, you know, today maybe I wasn't the best partner. I'll work on that tomorrow. See what I can do to be better. And go with that, right? Is is that okay? Or do I have to go down the wormhole of OCD and be like, oh my gosh, OCD, you're probably right. 
maybe it's best if I just leave this because I don't know that I'm ever going to satisfy what you want me to satisfy OCD in this and, and OCD with, with all of your great wisdom, you obviously have a crystal ball and have the ability to see in the future and know exactly how everything's going to turn out. So this slight doubt today will likely snowball down into an avalanche of hellishness for this relationship. So probably best to bail now. Well, if that's the case, the first time you rode a bike and you're, you're wobbled the handlebars a little bit, you're like, nope, 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 done, not having that. Or the first time you press the brakes on a car and the car went, you know, like that, you know, nope, 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 not, not, oh, wow, that was, see everybody jolting the car, that was rough, I'm, I'm never, I'm never doing that again. And the first time that maybe you, you answered something in class and, and uh, the answer wasn't quite right, oh, well, I can never. I can never answer a question again. I mean, what what if I get it wrong? I mean, that was, whew, I barely made it through that by the skin of my teeth. There's no way I'm going to get through another one of those. So I don't want to be the wrong person. I mean, God, that'd be, that'd be awful, horrible. How, how could, how could I go through life being wrong about something? Can't, can't have that. So I'm going to, I'm going to never answer a question ever again. If you're human, you have doubt. And if you have doubt and OCD, OCD is going to pick on your doubt because OCD is the doubting disorder and it loves to doubt things. So just know that that's the way that it goes. Raptor 327. Can OCD try to latch on to worrying about getting fired from your job? Well, of course, anytime that it starts off with can OCD try to? Yes, of course, 100%. I don't even have to finish reading the question. The answer is yes. Can OCD try to? Of course it can. And things coming back to get you. Sure, why not? I worry about this a lot as well as I'm very hard on myself about mistakes, no matter the severity. Yes. So, uh, Raptor, of course. If you have doubts about your job and, and if you're doing well enough and getting fired from your job, yeah, why wouldn't OCD jump onto those types of things? OCD loves a good doubt, right? OCD's favorite thing in the world. Ooh, something to doubt. Oh, <laughs> let's just go visit that doubt over there right now and just see what's going on. And then we'll spend the next 78 years worrying about it because that's what it loves to do. You're listening to the Wednesday night webinar. I am Dr. Patrick McGrath, Chief Clinical Officer at No CD. Good to have you here with me tonight. If you're interested in the largest online OCD community in the world, check out the No CD app, download it at Google Play or iOS. Also check us out at www.nocd.com and now also K N O W O C D as in no O C D and you'll check out our cool new partnership with Howie Mandel as we're trying to destigmatize OCD out there in the world and if you're looking for teletherapy we've got it here in the United States and in Canada and the United Kingdom and Australia as well so come on over everybody check us out Danielle says hello hello Thank you so much for all you do for those of us who struggle with OCD. It really means a lot. Absolutely, Danielle. More than happy to do it. This is one of my favorite hours of the week. Uh, Stephanie, are OCD thoughts going to be forever and ever? Will the same ones I'm having cause, uh, having cause mine all revolve around death? And that's my fear. Uh, Stephanie, very often what we see is that OCD thoughts kind of switch up over time and, and have various ways of popping up in the world. Usually by the time somebody sees to sees me for, for therapy, uh, they're probably on their third or fourth iteration of, of different types of OCD thoughts. So, um, and are OCD thoughts going to be forever? Well, intrusive thoughts are, I mean, and images and urges, but they are for everyone. So, um, that that's nothing different for you as a human being than it is for anybody else. Your reaction to them. Now that's a different question. Will that be forever? or will it be different? It can absolutely be different if you get therapy for it. And we really recommend exposure and response prevention therapy, which is really the first line treatment for obsessive compulsive disorder, getting that ERP done. And so hopefully that will be something that you'll be willing to reach out and do because you don't have to suffer from OCD for the rest of your life, Stephanie. Good luck. VA Girl says, thanks for being here, Dr. McGrath. VA Girl, thanks for you being here as well too. Please explain, uh, this is from Michelle, please explain some things we can do to help with obsessions after the recent shooting. It has set me back so badly. I knew this question was coming and I'm so glad, Michelle, that you brought it up. So let me just address this. Are there crappy bad people in the world? 
I, I think there, there are people uh, who are troubled, right? I, I don't really want to label people. Uh, we, we could go down such rabbit holes with that. I want to say this. There's people who are, who are deeply troubled out there in the world. We know that. And more and more we're attempting to reach people and get them the help that they need for whatever the diagnostic issue is that's going on in their life. We are, we are hopefully going to be able to reach more and more people and, and intervene earlier and earlier in people's lives too, and recognize more and more patterns of what might indicate somebody's going to do something like happened the other day in, in Texas. But here's what OCD is going to do. So I'm just going to tell all of you with OCD what it's going to do, especially if you have kind of a harm OCD. Your OCD is going to say, how do you know that won't be you next? How do you know that you won't do something like that? What guarantee can this McGrath person give you that that is something that wasn't OCD? How do you know that he wasn't diagnosed with OCD? Maybe he was. And maybe that's why he snapped and maybe that's why he did those things. That's all the crap that OCD is going to be feeding you over and over and over again. But here's here's what I believe about harm, OCD, Michelle, and I, I want all of you to really hear this and pay attention to this. I'll always go back to the day that I took somebody who had an intrusive thought about pushing people into trains. And my final days of therapy with her were to stand at a train platform with my hands behind my back, my feet spread wide, far apart. So my balance wasn't great. Her hands on my shoulder. And for three hours telling her to push me into every single train that came by. Now, if I thought for one moment that people with OCD were dangerous, I would have never done that ERP exercise. Never would have happened. But I can, I can say this with all seriousness. If I'm on a train platform, I'd rather have somebody with OCD behind me than somebody without OCD behind me because I'm less afraid of the person with OCD harm thoughts pushing me into a train than I am of somebody who doesn't have OCD. Why? Because the person without OCD probably isn't paying as much attention to everything going on, and they might be the one that inadvertently bumps into me versus the person with OCD who will be so concerned about everything going on and what's happening and what's going on around them that they'll do everything they possibly can to make sure that nothing like that would ever occur. So, Michelle, your OCD is going to take advantage of tragedies like what happened the other day. And your OCD is going to get you to doubt and wonder, could you do that? Could you be that kind of person? Could you ever do something of that nature? And Michelle, what I want you to recognize is that's, that's the baiting of OCD. That's the OCD trickery trying to get you to go down that rabbit hole and to do all sorts of compulsions to try to prevent something like that from happening. Because remember, Michelle, OCD eats one thing for breakfast and for lunch and for dinner, and that is compulsions. And OCD is just a jerk and will do anything that it possibly can to assure that you will do compulsions. Okay absolutely 100% anything that it possibly can to assure that you will do compulsions. Just know that. OCD doesn't care about who you are, what you do for a living, the people you love, the job you have. OCD doesn't care about that. OCD wants you to do a compulsion. So then OCD will say, Wait, did you see that on the news? Holy crap. Could you become that person? Oh my gosh, you better try to make sure that you don't. Let's start doing compulsions and, and having obsessions about that to make sure that doesn't happen. And now you're just playing OCD's game. You're doing exactly what OCD wants you to do. And that's where you get stuck, Michelle. So Michelle, I hope that helps. 
Eric says, what to do when OCD jumps themes? Should you do ERP with a new topic? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, but don't give up on the old topic either, right? Because sometimes OCD might want to play around the jump theme game so that it'll just distract you all the time. So you can go to the new topic and do some ERP, but I would continue doing the ERP to the stuff you were already doing as well too. Becky says, hi, my relationship OCD has lessened since doing ERP. The past two weeks have been amazing. Awesome. Congratulations, Becky. Love that. That is cool. JP says, I'm at a point where the thoughts don't bother me and I increased my medication, but sometimes I analyze without the anxiety. Yep. Well, remember, uh, you have to almost allow yourself to get used to the fact, right, that it is okay to have a thought that you used to have and it now not bother you. And it doesn't have to mean anything bad or negative whatsoever, right? You, It is okay to not be bothered by certain thoughts, right? But in the OCD world, not being bothered by a thought equals liking a thought. And they're, they're two absolutely different things. They are 100% different things. Just because I'm not bothered by something doesn't mean that I like it, right? I'm, I'm not really bothered by certain foods. I just don't like them, right? So I cannot be bothered by something and not like something. Or I cannot be bothered by something and be totally indifferent to it, right? Um, it, it, it works that way. But recognize that OCD doesn't go that route. OCD says, hmm. Well, that thought, yeah, the, the one there that, that you just had that, that didn't seem to bother you. What a sick, sick person you are for not being bothered by that thought. How dare you not be bothered by that thought? How dare you? That's horrible that you weren't bothered by that thought. Look at what your life's like now without me, right? You need me to be bothered by those thoughts because if you're not bothered by those thoughts, what does that mean? And everything we've talked about already, well, that means that you must like it and that you want to do it and that you're now going to do it because it doesn't bother you. And now you're not going to put up all the precautions that you used to put up to make sure that didn't happen. And without those precautions and doing those compulsions that I've asked you to do, you're probably going to do it. And if you're going to do it, then guess what? You're going to be in the news and you're going to be in the jail and you're going to be, your family's going to be ashamed of you and, and everyone at work's going to laugh at you and go, yeah, I knew that they were kind of weird. I just never said anything, but I really knew that they were kind of weird. OCD's a jerk. Don't don't let it ruin your life like that. Don't believe everything it tells you. Maybe that's one of the biggest mistakes people with OCD make. Anytime OCD speaks, they're like, ooh, wait a minute, OCD said something. Hold on. We, we need to listen to this because I I can't think of the last time, o, time OCD ever told a lie. Can you? No. no I, I mean, geez, OCD's told us to do all these compulsions. And guess what? None of the bad things that OCD has been worried about have happened since we've done compulsions. OCD must be really, really wise to tell us to do these compulsions because it seems to be working. How do you then rationalize the fact that other people don't do compulsions and the thing doesn't happen to them either. Well, they're just very lucky, but I know it's going to happen to them, but I know I'm safe because I'm doing all these compulsions. Okay. I don't believe you and I don't believe your OCD. Ali says my life le left me because of my OCD. Well, Ali, this is where you want to get therapy, right? This is where you really want to reach out and say, listen, uh, OCD was an uninvited guest into our relationship. And I want to do everything that I possibly can to remove OCD from our relationship so that I can just focus on the two of us and not have OCD uh, laying in bed with us and sitting on the couch between us and, and uh, going on a walk with us and also whatever else you want to say. A long for dog says, nice to see you. Thank you. Katrina, is writing anything in scripts illegal? Like, is it illegal to write anything down like fear or harming others or self or more taboo thoughts? 
Um, well, I mean, geez, I've written on a card that's in my wallet. I hope my parents die tonight, please God, and put a 666 on it. So, I mean, I do that. And uh, I don't I don't see anything being illegal about that. So, but Katrina, work with your therapist, right? If that's a concern for yours, uh, definitely work with your therapist on how you're going to approach writing your scripts, right? Uh, we want to be challenging on those things too, but we don't want the ERP to be then uh, causing even more anxiety and concerns as well too. So there are ways to do scripts that that can be done very well. So I would work with your therapist on that. Jeff says, congrats on the Howie Mandel partnership. Thanks, Jeff. Sherry says, hi. Thomas, what if the idea of starting medication causes my OCD to flare so bad that I can't function? The anxiety and fear of meds puts me into crisis mode. I can't handle the fear and I can't stop obsessing. So Thomas, here's what we know. The American Psychiatric Association says there are two treatments for OCD. There's ERP or ERP plus medication. So I don't know if you've been told that you have to start meds, Thomas, but uh, if if that's too difficult to do, try ERP first, Thomas, and go that route and see what you can do. And if then you're not getting enough out of that, maybe you could do ERP to the idea of starting medications. And then if medications would be helpful to you, then you could start the medications. So you might want to kind of take it on that route, Thomas, and see where you go. Stephanie says, I've managed to minimize ruminating, but one specific thought keeps entering my brain and the frequency doesn't seem to decrease. Well, I just have to live with this annoying thought in my brain forever. I don't think so. I just think that um, what you're probably going to see, Stephanie, is that that one's uh, more difficult, right? That one's kind of sticking on a little bit more. And what you want to make sure, Stephanie, that you aren't doing is any kind of subtle safety behaviors that are actually maintaining that thought. So you really want to do great ERP in that kind of situation, right? That's what you want to do is really, really good ERP to that one remaining thought that's there because there's there's a chance, I can't say for sure, but there's a chance that there might be some subtle safety behaviors like avoidance or reassurance or distraction or something like that that are going on, maybe compulsions or substance use that are maintaining that one thought. And you want to do all that you can to eliminate those so that you'll eliminate the influence of that thought or image or urge as well too. TJ says, how do I deal with my mind telling me I should leave my partner because I'm too old and ugly and he deserves better than me? I do believe he deserves better than me. Well, uh, A, you work on a, that with a therapist for some relationship OCD things. And B, you can also bring your partner into therapy as well, too, and have them be a, a part of all the work that you're doing as well. Nothing wrong with that. And I think it could be very helpful in that situation. Becky says, my relationship OCD is less than doing ERP with no CD. The past two weeks were great. Awesome. Another one. Great. However, today I felt it coming back and strong. I'm so afraid it's my truth now. Is this normal with OCD? Of course. I mean, OCD loves to, you know, kind of uh, grab on and and uh, do all that it can to, to not let go. And if it feels like it's being defeated, you know, go for a uh, kind of a couple uh, last stands or, or, or remaining charges. So Becky, it's all part of the process. And please just relate this to your therapist that you're working with here at no CD, because they're going to be able to help you through all of that as well, too. Okay. Uh, Chow are cool, I think is what it is. Uh, best way to deal with meta OCD when you are recovering from your sexual gender based OCD or just OCD in general, uh, you know, ERP, whatever, whatever's going on in any type of OCD, you're, you're wanting to work with a therapist to do some specific exposure and response prevention issue, uh, exercises around whatever it is that would be bothering you. So that that's where I would go. And that is, is that's my easiest advice without knowing any particular themes that might be going on now. Uh, hello, they have me on Cymbalta for my OCD and I've been on it for several months. This is Kim and all my symptoms increased and developed another disorder. Do you think this will level out? Uh, Kim, I just go right to your provider and just say, this is exactly what's happening here. And, and, uh, is there anything that we can do about this? I'm not a psychiatrist, so I can't give you med advice, but I would definitely go to your prescriber and let them know about what you're feeling there and what's going on. We are 40 minutes into our wonderful Wednesday night webinar. Good to be with all of you again. Reminder, uh, no CD is a downloadable app. You can Google, get through Google play or iOS. Please check us out. And we've got uh, teletherapy going on in the United States and Canada and the United Kingdom and Australia as well. 
We've got a couple of promos running, so please feel free to reach out to our care team at nocd.com, or you can do it if you download the app right there and press that that therapy button on the app as well, too. Lots of different ways that you can you can reach out to us here at NoCD, and we'd be happy to do what we can to help you out. Misty says, I can't stop ruminating over something I did a week ago. I want to give it to the, comp- I want to give in to the compulsions. What can I do? I can't stop thinking about it. Misty, do you need to stop thinking about it? I mean, if, if your goal is to stop thinking about it and you're telling yourself that you must stop thinking about it and you're making every attempt to try to stop thinking about it, is that just making you think about it? That's what I would wonder. Again, going to our our dear good friend, the pink elephant here, the moment we try to stop thinking of the pink elephant and we tell ourselves not to think of the pink elephant and we believe that we shouldn't think of the pink elephant, we are probably going to be thinking of the pink elephant. And therefore, the opposite would be true. I would want to carry that pink elephant around with me all the time and probably get to the point that I don't even notice that it's there anymore because I'm just so used to it. And that's the thing that likely is going to get me to stop thinking about it, is allowing it to be there and becoming used to it and not trying to make it go away or stop it. Laura says, thanks for being here. My therapist mentioned TMS, uh, transcranial magnetic stimulation therapy for OCD, and said that it's very promising. What do you think about this treatment? Uh, it did just get FDA approval. So there, it is an option for some folks to take a look at. Uh, but even if you're doing that, you should be doing exposure and response prevention therapy as well. Don't just rely on that as the way to overcome your OCD. You want to also be doing ERP. So you could do that in combination, say, with an OCD therapist as well for your ERP. I think that that could be something uh, to to very much consider. Uh, Elong for Dog says, I went through therapy at NoCD back in November for a few months. You started getting much better. I'm very happy to hear that. That's awesome. Ellie says, I want to do ERP by myself. How do I know uh, to what areas and to what extent to apply ERP that won't cause any problem for me in the future when I want to do ERP? I think doing this will cause a problem. Uh, you know, Ellie, I, if you want to do it by yourself, I think that you know, you'd want to do some good reading about ERP and everything beforehand. It's it's hard exactly to say uh, what there what what's going on and 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 uh, please actually consider reaching out to No City. Like I said, we got a couple of promos going on right now. If if you can start therapy this month, we've got a great promo going on. So I hope that you will consider reaching out to www.nocd and check us out, and and maybe we'd be able to help you or at least get you get you on the right path. Okay. Uh, I'm running out of ideas. Says I have intrusive thoughts that are like pedophilic OCD, and I'm scared that it'll stay forever. I cannot look at kids in the face, and these groinal responses are so intense. I hate it. What do I do? You look at kids in the face, and you allow yourself to realize that you can handle any groinal responses. And after doing that for a while, you recognize that oh, look, my fears of all this stuff is actually decreasing instead of increasing. What do you know? The more behaviors you're doing like what you're doing right now, and the more you're telling yourself you cannot look at kids in the face or all these things, the more you're going to be afraid of that. So I definitely want you to to be doing ERP to that and work with a therapist who can really help you do some great ERP to those very themes right there. I know that when people have themes that are along the lines of pedophilic issues or harm or scrupulosity, they often think, why can't I have any other kind of theme? Why does it have to be this theme? Why do I have to have this kind of OCD? Why can't I have a different kind of OCD? And I want you to recognize that that's a common, common thing among people with OCD is to have that kind of response to it. But you don't have to worry about it, right? What I want you to be able to do is to be able to live your life and be able to look anybody in the face and recognize that no matter who you look in the face and no matter what kind of response you have, it doesn't have to mean anything whatsoever. And you don't have to be afraid of it at all. Sometimes bodies just do things and that's the way that it is, right? Uh, and long for dust says I've had OCD since I was seven. Now I'm 38, been a hellish road, but recovery is possible. I promise. Thank you so much for saying that. Great. Uh, Michelle says, please, uh, uh, elaborate on how to cope with the stigma of mental illness causing these mass shootings. This is unnerving and setting so many of us back uh, aged events that took place in Texas. Well, I know we talked a little bit about that idea already, but you know, here's the other thing. You know, the idea that any kind of mental health issue causes this is ridiculous, right? 
that's that's just not the case right that's just not how it works right you could have something like uh let's say hoarding it it doesn't make you more prone to do a mass shooting you could have ocd it doesn't make you more prone to do a mass shooting you could have uh, a panic attacks or, or panic disorder it doesn't make you prone to do those types of things could there be other diagnoses that that maybe do yeah it's a possibility right so but don't confuse just that umbrella term of term of mental illness and then go wait a minute well i have ocd ocd is considered a mental health issue or a mental illness so does that mean that i'm in the category of people with mental illness and that i'm going to go do something like that no absolutely not right absolutely not Winter Ghost says, how do you deal with OCD when it doesn't feel like OCD? Well, again, uh, hard to say there exactly without knowing the exact way that it is coming through and feeling like it. I mean, I don't know if you're saying that it feels more real or something of that nature, but definitely, definitely. You want to work with a therapist on that because they can help you through that very thing. Okay. I'm running out of ideas. So I'm going treetop trekking soon and i worry that my intrusive thoughts will go jump or push someone off okay and what do you need to worry about with that uh, i watched a movie when i was a kid called the toxic avenger it's about a little nerdy kid who gets picked on and thrown into a vat of toxic waste and he comes back as like this massively strong guy and he and he goes after his tormentors and at one point he's driving the car and he sees some of the kids in the street and he's oh <laughs> 100 points if i run him over and then he runs him over to this day, if someone's crossing the street, I can't help but say, ooh, 100 points, 100 points, right there, 100 points. So I'm running out of ideas. I'm wondering how much I need to worry about that. I'm running out of ideas. How likely am I now to run people over because I've thought about running them over and that I get 100 points for it? Or could I just drive and say 100 points and that's it? And then just go with that and that's what it is. I think I could do that. That's what I do. I hope that you'll feel the same way about it as well. Mike and Megan say, I have a, I have contamination OCD. How do I tell the difference between things that are actually dangerous versus just OCD? For example, raw meat. Well, there are people without OCD who handle raw meat and then afterwards they wash their hands and then they go on with what they need to do. So, um, can raw meat be dangerous? Sure. Is there appropriate cleaning to deal with raw meat so that you won't have any any kind of reactions to it? Yes. And can you just follow those? Of course. But OCD will, of course, jump in and say, wait a minute. If they say to wash the cutting board in warm water, what about scalding hot water? That might be better. And if they say to wash your hands for 30 seconds, I bet seven minutes would be even better. Why don't I do that? Right? So Mike and Megan, what you got to do is just recognize, I don't think there's a difference, uh, for example, with raw meat for someone who does or does not have OCD. I think that there's a different interpretation of how to deal with raw meat if you have OCD or don't have OCD. And the people without OCD will be like, Okay, well, this is what's recommended. Okay, that's what I'll do. And the people with OCD will be like, oh, so there's the recommendation. Let's turn that up to 11. And then we'll see what we do from there. Because that's probably going to be the best way to deal with it if we turn it up to 11. If anybody wants to put the reference of where turn it up to 11 comes from in the comments, I'll give you a gold star. All right. So uh, JB says, I've worked with ERP. And under my beliefs, uh, I still have it just automatically do it no no it's a habit i've created but my mind isn't giving me any chance to act or behave differently how do i untrain and then it stops so jb i'll see if this picks up somewhere somewhere else along the way um carissa can it be possible to feel weird and off and not like yourself all day not just spikes of anxiety seems like the weird feeling and the thoughts are 24 7 of course why why, why wouldn't it uh, ab absolutely 100 percent. and um I want you to, to know that that is absolutely potentially the case, that there are days, sometimes weeks, where people just feel kind of off, right? But you don't have to let that last for a long time. 
reach out to somebody who is trained in helping you, right? Yeah, I was using this example the other day. I was doing a talk. I was talking about the idea that, you know, you might get paid millions of dollars to play a sport, right? So you've trained your whole life for it. And now you're on a professional team and you're, you're making millions of dollars. Guess what you still have? You still have a coach. So here you are, this millionaire, elite athlete, top of the heap kind of thing, and you still get coaching. You still have people running drills with you and, and giving you pointers and tips and, and training you in new ways of doing things. If millionaire athletes still get coached, and there's no stigma about that, why is there potentially for some folks a stigma about seeing a therapist? or getting help for some mental health issues, right? Don't let that get in your way. Get out there, talk to someone, reach out to someone. Go ahead, get the coaching. If you look up to athletes who are coached all the time and think they're your heroes, then fine, be like your hero and get some coaching for yourself. You just need coaching about OCD. That's all. That's the difference. Days Off says, I struggle with bad contamination OCD and my spouse was sick two weeks ago and I am still avoiding him. I feel so bad. He had been very caring. How do I not feel so guilty that he has to deal with my OCD? Go get help. That's the best way. Say, hey, honey, listen, I recognize that uh, you were sick and my OCD really took over that experience and it wasn't really helpful to you and it didn't do much good for our relationship. And the best thing that I can do for you in our relationship right now is to work on me. And so I'm going to spend some time working on me with a therapist so that in the future, I'm going to be able to be better in situations like that and not let the OCD rule what I do, but I'm going to rule what I do and not, not what the OCD wants me to do. Jess says, my brain floods me with strong fear, happens quick, almost feels like I'm frozen for a second, then flooded with thoughts. I make decisions, either OCD, panic, uh, and then it's continued. Uh, let's see. Otherwise, I have minimal OCD. I don't understand why I get that sudden overwhelming, overwhelming strong urge. Any thoughts? You know, um, Jake, Jess, one of the things that I think that I would want to have you do in that situation is something that we call interoceptive exposures. And interoceptive exposures are exposures to panic-like symptoms, right? So if you're having some panic things and you're reacting to those things and, and it's triggering a lot of stressors and other things, which oh, believe me, OCD loves a great stressor, by the way, if, if that's happening, then I would want you to learn how to handle any kind of bodily sensations or panicky types of things so that that isn't a trigger for your OCD to utilize anymore as a way to kind of throw all sorts of obsessions and then demand all sorts of compulsions from you in the future. So reach out to your therapist and say, there's a potential that this interoceptive exposure might be some good ideas for me. And that would be things like running in place and hyperventilating and breathing through straws and spinning in a chair and teaching you all of the bodily sensations that might happen in panic don't have to be anything that are, are fearful or fear inducing or that you need to run away from or be afraid of. Hope that helps. Claire says, uh, by the right way, I meant that I didn't feel like I'm distressed. I was feeling this anxiety about not feeling distressed or feel like, okay, okay. Yeah, I think we, I think we talked about that, Claire. So thank you very much. Jacob says, such a good point. You shouldn't punish yourself for your intrusive thoughts. Absolutely. Christina says, right on point. This is awesome. From Nicole, thank you. you Danielle says, you got it exactly right, Dr. McGrath. This is definitely the way it feels. Such a long train, of think, long train of thinking that OCD does. Nicole says, you've clearly been in my head. Laura says, perfect. Yeah, this, this is amazing. <laughs> Jacob says, leave Dave alone. That's funny. Uh, Danielle says, nailed it. Thank you. It's scary. Uh, let's see. Uh, let's see. Michelle says, it's scary that I said something about a Molotov cocktail. My neighbor threw one at a police officer and burnt him almost to death. That triggered me terribly. I saw it happen. Yeah. Sorry that that happened, right? I mean, that that sucks that, that you saw something like that happen. But it's in the news all the time, and it's going to be uh, discussed in other areas as well, too. So here's here's the deal, Michelle and everyone else. There's always someone in the world that's going to be, bring up something that's going to be triggering to us. And OCD is going to jump on that, right? Or trauma is going to jump on that and say, ah, we shouldn't be thinking that. I, I need to shield myself away from that. 
uh, Dave Carbonell, a great therapist that I worked with in the Chicago area that I know well, talked about uh, one of his patients that he just called the lobster lady. And the lobster lady wouldn't drive anywhere because she didn't want to go down a new street and there would be a red lobster restaurant because it's got the picture of a lobster on it. And she would never go to restaurants because she didn't want them to serve lobster. And if she had to go to a restaurant for something, she'd call ahead and make sure they didn't serve lobster there. And if she did have to go there, she'd track out the route to make sure that she wouldn't pass a red lobster. And she wouldn't put the radio on just in case the song Rock Lobster came on by the B-52s. And she spent her whole life being afraid of lobsters, who were dead, by the way. Way because they were red and cooked already, but she was so afraid of lobsters, right? Now, is that a way we want to live, that we can never hear about something or that we can never see something? Or do we want to be able to say, yeah, my neighbor threw a Molotov cocktail at someone and it was really horrible and uh, I still going to have to learn how to deal with that. You know why? Because the news is going to put stuff out every day that we're going to hear about that's going to bother us. And we're going to hear stories from other people we know talking about things that have happened maybe in their own lives or their jobs or something like that that are going to bother us. None of us is going to be immune to something that will potentially be bothering to us. And if we have OCD, it's going to go, ooh, no, that was bothersome. Well, let's do compulsions, right? And all I want you to be able to do is to be able to hear anything and say, yeah, you know what? I don't really like that. But I'm also not going to let that rule my life as well, too. I'm just going to be okay with not liking it and move on from that. I don't have to do anything else with it. And that's where I hope all of you can get to and not go down the road of what OCD wants all of you to get to as well. Okay, we got that one. Laura liked poop in a bag. Thank you. That's good. <laughs> Claire says, yes, thank you. I just have to be better to learn to handle more feelings that maybe I had the feeling I liked it or the thought or urge. Yeah, exactly, Claire. You, you got it. You got it. Uh, Thomas says, any book recommendations for OCD? Well, um, you know, not to toot my own horn, but I did write a book called The OCD Answer Book, uh, which hopefully you will find to be very helpful there, Thomas. I think that it could be very useful. It's a it's a Q&A book about OCD. And if you like this Q&A format, it's basically what we do every night, but in a book. So uh, Thomas, I hope that that would be helpful to you uh, out there in the world of OCD. Uh, let's see. Jess says, I think the fear, shame, disgust, feelings that come along with OCD is often not talked about. Those are the reasons why thoughts get us hung up, the feeling. Yes, absolutely, Jess. One of the things that I've always said, and I didn't like what was in the diagnostic manual, is the fact that it just talks about anxiety or distress. And it doesn't talk about shame or guilt or disgust or other feelings that happen with OCD too. So I want all of you with OCD to recognize that OCD comes across in so many varied, varied ways. It's not just anxiety. It's not just distress, but it happens in numerous, numerous different kinds of ways, right? So for those of you who have OCD, who are suffering with OCD, know that we don't just think you're anxious, right? We know that you have shame. We know that you experience guilt. We know that you find things disgusting and we want to be there for you and help you in recognizing that. Uh, Mauricio says, how much do you recommend mindfulness as a side support? I have no issue, Mauricio, with mindfulness whatsoever. I just don't want you to do it during ERP because I want you to fully focus on the ERP that's going on. That's what I hope you will do. So, Marcio, if, if mindfulness is helpful to you, and and uh, my friend John Hirschfield wrote a book about mindfulness and OCD that I know is uh, is great. And, and Danielle put Overcoming Unwanted Intrusive Thoughts by Sally Winston and, and uh, uh, Dr. Seif is, is great too. You know, those are all great books, all sorts of good stuff out there uh, that, that people can use. But uh, I just don't want you doing the mindfulness during the ERP experience because I want you to fully, fully focus on, on that ERP. Well, once again, everyone, you have spent an hour with me. I hope that it's been helpful. Again, no CD, www.nocd.com or download our app on Google Play or iOS. Thanks to Howie Mandel for joining with us to help end the stigma about obsessive compulsive disorder. And if you're looking for treatment and can start this month, we've got some promos going on this month as well too. So reach out to us here at No CD. We'll see you soon.
ます。